guys, so this video is a comparison between the Clay Depot and the Hourglass. And I was inspired because of the lovely, gorgeous, blushing pixie who hopefully has um, already had her little her little baby girl. Um, anyway, she had purchased the Hourglass concealer, this little sucker here. And then she said she was going to maybe purchase the Clay Depot in the future. And I had actually already purchased, um, I can't remember which one I purchased. Oh, maybe I purchased them the same day. But I had both, so I thought that I would do a comparison as well. But um, and if she does one, I'll maybe try and link her um, comparison video under here. But I don't know when she's going to have time because she's brand new mommy. So anyways, um, right, I already did um, a video on the Clay Depot. I don't know if it will have been uploaded by the time I'm shooting this, so I won't go into too, too much. No, actually, I should. I should probably upload that first. Right. So you will have already seen it for those of you who wanted to watch that. So this is a comparison video between these two products, the Clay Depot 30, no, not 30, beige, and the Hourglass Natural. Now, I think she used to only have three shades. She's brought out some more shades, um, I think three more. So there's six of these suckers. And I think that was my reticence to go into this. I know that Gina Bina Wina um, and quite a few other people were raving about this Hourglass concealer, but there was like, I don't know, like pearl, medium or something, and tan, and none of those shades worked for me. Pearl was just, it was just all wrong for me, and I just thought, ugh, okay. I'm sort of not going to, um, spend that on something that just isn't bang on and I was so happy with the concealers I already have so I was and I'm not a big fan of stick concealer so I was like whatever you know so I can't get on the bandwagon whatever so this is in natural and this shade actually really really works for me so I got a tester of it first and I used it almost every day for a couple of weeks and decided to um, purchase it and I don't know if you'll even be able to tell. Oh, you can't even. Well, maybe that's a good thing. It's kind of right there. And uh, it's good that you can't really tell because it really should um, sort of blend in. Okay. So the difference between the two. Well, price, hello. Um, I think it's 37 Canadian, 85 Canadian. Hello. Yowzy, more than double. This is, how much of it is in here? 3.5. Ooh, honey, my eyes. 3.5 to 5. So you get a little bit more in the clay po, but you're paying well over double, more than double for this sucker. Um, they're both creamy. They're both emollient. Um, they have pretty good shades. I would say that the between beige and the natural, the natural's got a little bit more of a yellow in it. Um, Clay de Peau has a little bit more of the pink, but it's not like screaming out at you pink. It's, um, a sh it's still beigey, but it's pinky. So, um, the shading is a little bit different and, um, but the emollients, the creaminess, they're kind of the same. I would say maybe Hourglass is just a tad, tad, a little bit creamier. And, um, that's sort of, the only kind of similarities and differences. Which one do I prefer? I prefer the Clay de Peau. And why? I did um, many tests of Clay de Peau on one eye and Hourglass on the other. Um, I did it for about two or three days because sometimes you have good under eye days and sometimes you don't. So one day isn't enough. So I did it for about two or three days just to sort of make sure. And it's coverage, people. Coverage, coverage, coverage. I got way better coverage from the Clay de Peau using the exact same amount. The Hourglass compared to the Clay de Peau. Now, okay, when I just used the Hourglass and I had nothing else to compare it to, I really, really liked the coverage. I thought it was really quite nice. It was very sort of creamy and luxurious and it felt fantastic. Um, I didn't think of it for anything other than my under eye area. And it was really, really nice. And again, I used it for quite a few weeks. That sample, I mean, I threw that out because, and there were still tons left. I mean, you really need so little. Um, so I, I didn't mind it, but when I compared it to the Clay de Peau, the Clay de Peau, the coverage, the opaqueness of it, and yet the very, very sort of light creamy consistency, 
it almost made the hourglass look a little bit ashy. So my one eye looked really, really quite bright. The other one, it still had coverage, but it tended to look a tiny bit ashier, and maybe that's because there's just a tiny hint of pink to counteract um, some of the discoloration than the, than the um, hourglass, which is sort of straight up, kind of um, a yellow, sort of beigey thing that I really actually like. So um, the coverage was the, the major thing. I could tell the difference. The hourglass is still really nice, um, and it's pretty close to it. I would definitely have to say it's not like you're going to be wasting your money if you do the hourglass. Now, for some people, $37 with tax 40 something is still too much for a concealer, and I totally, totally, totally get that as well. So, um, but we're just talking straight high end here, obviously. And um, out of the two, I think you would be happy with the hourglass, but because I've got both to compare, I mean, the, the clay de peau wins hands down because not only does the coverage look better under the eyes, it works double duty with my hyperpigmentation. Um, as I mentioned in that previous video, it's the only product that I found that can do double duty like that. I don't have to use two separate products, one for the face and one under the eyes, which is what I've always sort of had to do. I mean, things will cover up your pigmentation, but most things within half an hour, it just starts moving or slipping or getting sheer and you can see the pigmentation. With the Secret Camouflage from Laura Mercier, I can get a couple of hours. So it's the best thing that I've come across for your face and covering up blemishes or dark spots or discoloration and imperfections. Um, the Clay de Peau has longer. It sort of lasts longer and can cover that up too. So it does do face and under eyes to me just as well. And um, so that's why in this, I hate to say it, but the pricier, more hyped item does prevail. <clears throat> Nuts! I wanted to be the one that said, no, you can get it for cheaper and for better and for whatever. But um, yeah, I would definitely say that um, the Clay de Peau wins out. Not really much of a fragrance on either one of them. Oh, well, you know what? This one smells kind of funky. Not that I noticed it, it just kind of smells like eraser like erasers or something. <laughs> Very faint, I, again, I have a super sensitive nose, so this does have a little bit of a something. It's not a fragrance necessarily, I think it's just the ingredients of the products. Maybe like, you know how olive oil smells or erasers or something like that? And this really has no smell at all. So um, there you go, I hope you found that helpful and I will talk to you guys soon.